Thank you so much for joining us today, Josh. Uh, first of all, for everyone that's watching, can you quickly highlight uh, the key features of Gorilla Glass 6 that you've announced today? Yeah, so Gorilla 6 has really been around uh, improving survivability in repeated drops. And so we found that many consumers are dropping their device not once, not twice, but multiple times per year. So we've really enhanced the survivability for these repeated drops. And so in our testing, we've actually found that Gorilla 6 is able to survive up to 15 drops in the testing we've done in the laboratory whereas competitive glasses are failing typically on the first drop, and it's about a 2x improvement over Corning Grow Glass 5. Okay, so one of the things that came about in the Q&A that happened inside was that Gorilla Glass 6 has improved with durability, but the scratch resistance is uh, as much as Gorilla Glass 5 was. Yes. And you also spoke about how you have to focus on one over the other. Can you elaborate on that a little bit? Yeah, it's not necessarily focusing on one over the other, but the intent for Gorilla 6 was really to improve that survivability in those repeated drops. And when we did that, we want to make sure at the least that we're not taking a step back in terms of scratch. So the innovation this time around was really on drop. In the future, we may decide to innovate around other attributes. Okay. Um, but the mission in this case was really survival, survivability on those one meter drops and making sure that we're not degrading the scratch performance versus previous generations. So when you talk about Gorilla Glass on a variety of smartphones, a lot of smartphones have their own design element where the glass curves at the edge or there's a plastic or a metal band at the edge or a separate glass band yes, all around. Yeah. How much of this back and forth do you see between the manufacturers and Corning to get the design right for what the smartphone maker wants on the glass and how does that affect the durability uh, when it comes to the edges and what surrounds the screen? Yeah, so in the end, it's a, a huge interplay between glass durability and device design. And so as we come out with glasses that are more and more durable, often the designers have an option. They can either stay with the same thickness or the same design, mm -hmm. and they could have enhanced durability, or they potentially modify things like thickness, they could modify the shape of the glass. And so what we've seen over the last decade is both of those things, right? Some people say, well, I want to make my device more durable. Others may say, I want to do something that I haven't been able to do before. So really, every generation that we've um, generated has enabled something different to be done with design. But what that does is it makes it even more challenging now that the glass may be two and a half D shaped or yeah. maybe 3D shaped, maybe on the back now for things like wireless charging and antenna flexibility. So we have to be conscious of this change in the evolution of the design and what can we do to make sure that we continue to enhance that durability so that we can have the designs that people admire. So if you had to say one thing that was really, really challenging when it comes to making glass this durable, what would that be? I think in general, there's a a large number of attributes that you can imagine we need to meet for this application. We have to have the right electrical properties, physical properties, chemical durability, environmental durability. All these things need to come together. And starting with a composition and trying to make sure it's doing everything you need is really a key challenge. So luckily we have great glass scientists, we have great um, research and development technicians, um, but that's definitely a challenge is really making a composition that can not only be tough and durable, mm -hmm. but do all these other things that we needed to do for this application. Okay, and when will we be able to see Gorilla Glass 6 on a smartphone in the market? Do you have any time frame from any manufacturer that's going to do it, or will it just be with the next iPhone like people are talking? We've been talking, of course, with many of our customers, and many of the customers that have contractual agreements with us, they've mm -hmm. received Gorilla Glass 6, they've sampled it, and we expect that certainly by the end of the year, that there'll be devices on the market with our new generation of glass. So one thing that we've seen is usually when glass is used at the back with the different shapes in the camera bumps or especially where the camera is located is one of the most fragile points. Is that anything that has been looked into a lot if the phone falls on the back and if it's very close to the camera then you see a lot of glass cracking in that point? Yeah, so glass backs has definitely been something which has been widely adopted and, and many people think that's purely aesthetic. But a lot of that is actually driving or enabling things like wireless charging, things like placement of antennas. And so there's a lot more flexibility with a glass pack to mm -hmm. place all these antennas, which now there's 5G, 4G, 3G, um, Wi-Fi, um, Bluetooth, you name it, right? So a lot of that is really a functionality aspect. But with that, there's new challenges created of now we have more glass on the device. Mm -hmm. So that's exactly one of the reasons why we're introducing these glass compositions that have a higher durability so that we can try to reduce breakage in those scenarios where we now have more glass on the device, maybe in a more progressive design than we've had in the past. Okay, so this is slightly more of a business question. Is sure. uh, You guys spoke on stage about Micromax, a company in India that adopted yes. Gorilla Glass 5 on a mid-tier device. 
any plans where you will approach a lot more smartphone makers in India that are making local low cost entry level Android smartphones and maybe have a conversation with them about why they should adopt Gorilla Glass over uh, whatever they're using right now? Absolutely. We have a high interest, obviously, in India and really allowing consumers to have the same quality of devices that they have elsewhere. And I think John made a very good point in the Q&A around you know, the, the incremental cost of a premium material is actually a fairly small proportion of the overall bill of materials. So what we believe is that certainly people could adopt a, a premium glass like Gorilla Glass 6. Mm -hmm. They could offer their consumers a more durable device and that's a fairly incremental cost in terms of the bill of material of that device. So definitely something we have interest in and purely uh, um, have an interest in, in India. All right. I didn't mean to say purely, I'm say <laughs> <laughs> surely. Okay. Um, if you, anyone who's read uh, probably the book, The One Device that talks about the origin of the iPhone, Gorilla Corning played a big role with Steve Jobs and getting Gorilla Glass on that first iPhone. Yes. So apart from that, any other legacy, legendary story of Corning's uh, Gorilla Glass that you would like to share with us? I, I think the whole story has been legendary. You know, if you look at over 6 billion devices in the market in a decade with Gorilla Glass, to me, that's just phenomenal adoption. And you think of, as John mentioned, really the penetration of these devices into our daily lives. Right? I've been online how many hundreds of times today. So I think just that story of in 10 years, 11 years, over 6 billion devices with our glass is just a, a phenomenal story. Mm -hmm. So phones and tablets are two segments where you've seen Gorilla Glass a lot, but we have seen it on other devices like laptops and certain other peripherals uh, related to uh, phones and tablets sure. and things like that. So any other sphere where you guys would like to expand and see your products maybe on televisions at some point? Or yeah, something we like? continue to sell certainly into the wearable market, the IT market, mm. things like laptop computers, things like uh, tablets, um, certainly things emerging like the automotive space. Yeah. So Gorilla, you know, the properties that lend itself to good performance on, on these mobile electronics lends itself as well to things like automotive interior, automotive exterior glazing, things like architecture, things like appliances. But we do have some large cover applications as well, okay. um, which we can offer even some unique things like anti-glare, um, different touch capabilities and mm. things of that nature. So certainly are looking to broaden out beyond just the consumer mobile electronics into some of these other applications. Awesome. So those are all my questions. Anything you'd like to tell our viewers back home in India? No, I think, again, uh, India is obviously very uh, high interest to, uh, to Corning. Um, very happy again to release Girl Last 6 with this improved performance. All right. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you.